Hello, welcome to today's lecture. So, we were discussing high resolution NMR spectra of molecules. If you remember in the last class, we had discussed how to make chemical shift field independent because we remember that like uh, if we record chemical shift at different field in terms of frequency or in terms of hertz, the values were changing. So, to get rid of that, we started uh, looking at the how to express the chemical shift in ppm value and that ppm value made it independent of field. Then we looked at that for referencing we need some compound which is inert and does not react with the solvent and the molecule of our interest and therefore, TMS and DSS were obvious choice because they, their resonance comes quite up field shifted or lower ppm value. They are what like TMS is um, highly shielded and that is how it is used as a reference. DSS on the other hand is water soluble and it does not interact with any biomolecules and it is used for water soluble compound. So, next we looked at the what are the factors that influence chemical shift and out of those many factors we looked at what ring current can do. So, ring, ring current effect we had looked at and ring current is one which causes the downfield shift or higher ppm value shift of resonance of CH protons of aromatic compound. The, then we also looked at the contact effect this is this comes because of some unpaired electron are present and that can shift chemical shift significantly. Then after that we looked at the chemical shift variation due to different nuclei attached and that all we have summarized in the last class. So, now from here we will move forward and we start looking at actually now the another very very crucial parameter that is called spin spin coupling or this is also called J coupling or scalar coupling. So, we will start looking each of these uh, parameter together. So, this is also called J coupling ok. Scalar coupling because this does uh, this does not depend upon uh, orientation and this is also called a scalar coupling. Now, so we had looked at the first uh, chemical shift spectra that were recorded on ethyl alcohol on 40 megahertz and it gave three line. The first line corresponds to CH3, methyl proton, methylene proton and this is for OH proton. So, this was for OH, this was for CH2 and this is for CH3. And the height of each of these peak was like 3 to 2 to 1 that is what we had looked at. So, this was the first spectrum recorded by Dharmati and co-workers and then th that actually opened the avenue of NMR in chemistry. Now, in the same year almost in 5051 Proctor and Wu discovered one of the very very important parameter which is called actually uh, the coupling constant. This helps in unambiguous characterization of molecule. So, today we will look at how actually it helps in unambiguous characterization of a molecule. So, what happens that in, in the high resolution spectrum actually the one line of methyl proton that we had looked at here is not actually one line. However, it is splitted into three lines and that, that is what here we see. In case of methylene actually this is also not one line and it is splitted into many lines and uh, similarly OH also splits into many lines. The splitting of this resonance of line and the extent of this splitting, extent of this splitting uh, actually reports for what is the strength of interaction between various spins and how these spins are interacting. So, this actually this splitting pattern helps on uh, helps us in identifying the fine structure of a molecule because the spin spin coupling between the methyl and methylene proton actually tells the neighboring group effect and this is due to something called J coupling or spin spin coupling or scalar coupling. So, just to remind you here we should have if there is no coupling then in case of methyl there was only one peak here and here also there was a one peak and this is also a one peak. Now, this was 3 1 2 
Now, if you look at here, this OH it, it, it is coming slightly upfield shifted then like CH2 and uh, this spectra was recorded on generally very like neat alcohol, pure alcohol. So, now we move forward and we look at how does this splitting occurs. So, what is the region behind the spin spin coupling or J coupling. So, this happens because of interaction of mediated by the electron in, in, uh, in the intervening bond. So, in a simple term what is happened like we had looked at the chemical shift is because there is a spin and around that there are electronic clouds. Now, if you look at these spins is not in isolation, there is another spin which is near here and that spin can influence the chemical shift or the resonance property of this spin and that coupling happens via the electrons that are uh, between them. So, that is why this is called through bond coupling. So, uh, through bond coupling because the two spins are now coupled by a electron. So, in the bond that is intervening here. So, a nuclear spin can polarize the electron spin adjacent to the bond orbital here it can polarize it and that polarizes the spin parameter of electron in the same orbital. So, but that can affect this one and then what happens this is through bond. So, can extend up to 4 to 5 bond, but as you go far and far the strength of that effect decreases. Therefore, the, the J coupling becomes smaller and smaller as we move far and far. So, the strength of the coupling is called coupling constant or J coupling. So, that means how much this spin affects its neighboring spin through bond it is called J coupling and as we say as we move from one spin to two spin this is quite strong. But if you look at effect of third spin the J coupling spin decreases because we are moving now far from spin number 1 to 2 to 3. Now, what is happening here? It is a concerted polarization of a nuclear spin and electron spin. So, in a simple term suppose we have two spins here spin uh, and, uh, and there are some electron spin in between. So, what is happening now if we are considering spin number 1 then it is near there is another spin and that spin can exist in two form either up form or down form. So, spin state A and spin state B. So, because of this orientation of the now this is our interest spin and this is its neighboring spin. So, it has different state spin state 1, 1 state A and state B. So, now this is influencing the electronic spin which is between these two spins and that is here that is shown here. So, then the coupling interaction between these spins I 1 and I 2 is quantitatively given by Inter spin interaction which is called J12, I1 and I2. So, this is the coupling strength where J12 is a coupling constant. So, in a simple term if there is a spin here and if there is another spin here, now this spin is affecting the resonance frequency of this because spin number 2 here I2 and I1. So, this is I1 and this is I2. So, the interaction occurring between them because of this coupling is J i 2. So, now the resonance frequency of I 1 is affected by I 2 and vice versa and that is called spin spin coupling or the scalar coupling. So, let us define two spins like A and X. Now, as we see that if these two spins are close by and they are connected by bond then there is a there is a coupling between them which is called J coupling. Now, the then what happens? the energy of spin A now um, actually it has two G man state. So, like here spin A I A then it has two G man sp spin alpha state and beta state. Okay. Now, depends upon mm, this state depends upon whether the X spin is in alpha state or beta state. So, I A this state depends upon whether the X spin is in alpha state or X spin is in beta state that affects the resonance frequency of this. And this coupling can be positive. So, because of that now what will happen between these two states? Now, there are two spins as we discussed. 
spin A and spin say X. Now A spin has two state alpha and beta state and similarly X spin has alpha and beta state. So now because of this there are four state can be possible alpha alpha, alpha beta, beta alpha, beta beta. What it means in terms of vector so here is alpha state and this is beta state, here is also alpha state and beta state. So it can be up up both spin, up down, down up and down down right? that is all we are we were discussing. So because of this the all states that we were discussing it can exist here alpha 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 beta beta alpha and beta state and these states will, will have different energy. So because now A spin is not in isolation it is coupled with B spin therefore the different energy will be. So coupling between them is positive if the energy of alpha state of spin A increases that means if the energy changes here and if it is increases and increases for X spin that is in alpha state and it decreases if X spin is in beta state. Okay. So what, what we are saying the energies uh, of spin A and B can change. So suppose here here is the energy of A spin it can decrease or increase depending upon if the uh, X spin is in alpha state or beta state it can increase or decrease. Now that is what we call couple is positive. However, the energy of beta state of spin A will increase if the X spin is in the beta state. So if X spin is in beta state then it will uh, increase and it will decrease if X spin is in alpha state. So that actually changes. So that is what now we can understood. So instead of now two energy here it can be depending upon whether what is the state of B and we can have four states here depending upon whether uh, B is in alpha state or beta state. Okay. So that is what it is shown here. So again I will repeat it. So say uh, spin A has two energy level one for alpha state one for beta state. Now depending upon what is the orientation of spin X if it is beta state or alpha state. So here if you look at this energy level is changing if it is beta state the energy is decreasing if it is an alpha state energy is increasing and the separation between these two states is only few hertz. Okay. Similarly here also the energy of beta state also has changed depending upon whether X is in beta state or alpha state. So there are four energy level now created depending upon whether the X spin is in beta state or alpha state. So we can call this as a like alpha beta state as a 0, alpha alpha state as a 1, here beta alpha state as a 0 and beta beta state as a minus 1. So now the resonance for the spin A will have two line one will be mu 1 A so this is first line and this will be second line. Therefore the now earlier which was only one line here centered at the mu A now it will split it into two line and that separation between these two line will be J 1 2 or J coupling be the, between these two states. So if you look at the energy level diagram so if alpha alpha is alpha alpha state that is alpha A alpha X is this alpha beta is this beta alpha is this beta beta is this. So now we have four energy states one coming from here if the first spin is changing its state that is alpha is going to beta and uh, here also if alpha is going to beta here on our, uh, again we have the energy state. So now spin A we have two lines one corresponds to this and another corresponds to this. Similarly it will happen also for beta and that will be given by these two lines here. So if A is coupled with X, X has splitted A into two lines. Similarly if A is a half spin and X is also half spin as we said. 
So, x will be also split it into two lines. So, these are for a spin, this is for x spin. Now, that is the fine structure. So, now when a is coupled with x, the transition will be called alpha uh, a x beta a x. So, this is here if you look at a is flipping. Similarly, here again a is flipping and that is what this and this line corresponds to this and this line corresponds to. Okay. So, now as you are saying parallel orientation of these spins increases the energy states and anti parallel will decrease the energy state. So, here if you look at now we are looking at the coupling between this H and C and here it is coupled via C. So, if they are anti parallel here if the parallel orientation of spin increases the energy whereas the anti parallel decreases the energy. So, here J will be positive and here J will be negative. Okay. So, in case of one bond coupling like here one bond coupling the anti parallel orientation of nuclear spin leads to lower energy and that coupling is called positive. Whereas, two bond separated spin like here two bond one bond here one bond here two bond separated spin the parallel orientation of spins leads to lowering of the energy and this coupling is called negative. So, we can have the value of J positive and negative. So, now depending upon how the orientation of each spins the value is also changing. But one thing to remember this J coupling is field independent chemical shift was field dependent when we express that in ppm value it become field independent J coupling invariably it is field independent. So, positive and negative sign depends upon the orientation, but that does not depend upon which field we are recording this is a constant value. Okay. So, what are the factors that influence the spin spin coupling or J coupling? So, first as we see the closeness of two spins depend, dictates what will be the strength of covalent because these uh, spins are coupled via bond and in bond there are electron. So, spin spin coupling over one bond is denoted by uh, J1 like here J is the uh, scalar coupling and 1 denotes the 1 1 value. Now, in uh, the geminal coupling which is say is 2 bond. So, here these, these 2 bonds are called here like 1 bond here and 1 bond. So, these are 2 bond coupling. Now, vicinal coupling is called 3 bond coupling. So, if you look at 1 bond, 2 bond and 3 bond coupling. Similarly, long range uh, can be like more than 4 bond coupling. So, depending upon 1 bond, 2 bond, 3 bond, 4 bond coupling. So, H here and H here will be 4 bond coupling if it is connected like this or 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that is more than this is called uh, long range coupling. So, if you look at the distance is increasing the strength of the coupling will decrease because this is connected through bond. So, as for an example if you look at 2 bond coupling and uh, we are saying this is minus 12.5 3 bond coupling is 4. However, depending upon how they are oriented if long range coupling like 5 bond is 5.5 to 11 hertz. So, but, but if you compare 2 to 3 actually as we move further the coupling constant strength is decreasing. So, there are range of coupling constant. So, a homonuclear coupling are generally um, small compared to heteronuclear. So, for proton proton like 2 bond coupling is generally 5 to 20 hertz whereas, a 1 bond coupling in heteronuclear system like 13 C and uh, proton it is a quite a bit 100 to 250 hertz. For nitrogen proton coupling here it is 80 to 100 hertz and then phosphorus proton coupling is typically around 17 to 12 hertz. Now, here if you take 3 bond coupling this decreases 4 bond coupling further can decrease the proton proton coupling. However, these this is called homonuclear coupling and these will be called heteronuclear coupling because that is between proton and proton and here our x nuclei like 13 C and 15 and phosphorus are there. Till now we have uh, uh, understood that there is one parameter which is important is chemical shift. 
the another parameter is important coupling constant, coupling constant is coming because of another spin coupled to the uh, spin of our choice and this coupling is happening via uh, electronic bond and as we move further the strength can decrease, but this splitting uh, uh, the splitting cause because of this J coupling or scalar coupling. So, now these two parameter chemical shift value and a J coupling these two are very important parameter because these are required for high resolution NMR spectrum analysis for any molecule even small molecule or bigger molecule. Now, as we looked at the chemical shift value a is for a particular nuclei. So, that gives the particular resonance frequency for a nuclei and this is denoted by delta value. So, that is chemical shift value. The coupling constant actually determines the interaction between those nuclei. So, a particular spin will have a chemical shift and another spin have another chemical shift and how strongly they are coupled or how strongly or weakly they are interacting that is given by J value. So, the basic analysis for any molecule is requires these two parameter their chemical shift value and the coupling constant between these two. If you know this value one can identify the molecule. So, this basic analysis of any molecule is done by using these two parameters and this is called first order analysis and there are certain basic rule to understand what is what is required first, first order analysis and then that I am going to come in a minute. But for more complex analysis of this uh, spin spin coupling you require even more um, complex formalism and that we will look at later at the course which is called quantum mechanical calculation for if the spins are too strongly coupled. So, now we move to first order analysis which is the simplest analysis of the molecules. So, before we move ahead we define some of the spins nomenclature and spins are generally defined in terms of upper case of the alphabet like A, B and C. Now, a spin will be called A, B system or A, X system depending upon what kind of chemical shift they have. If their chemical shift is quite close then they will be uh, they will be called A B system because in alphabet A and B are close. If their chemical shift is far then they will be called A X system if you look at the alphabet A and X is quite apart. So, A X system this two spin have a resonance frequency that are widely separated like something say here this will be A and X and on the same magnet A B system will be something like A and B. Now, so A B X system will be like say A, B and X here because A and B are quite close and X is far from them. So, that is called A B X system. Now, so A B are fairly close in relation to the in comparison to X. There is another parameter which, which is determined here is called coupling constant. So, the coupling between them is called J A B and coupling between them will be called J A X. Okay. So, now here A X system because their chemical shift is quite far A X system or A M X system or A M Q X system because they are like separated in the alphabet these will be called weakly coupled system. Whereas, whereas A B system or A B C system will be called a strongly coupled system. So, what is happening here? A and X their chemical shift quite far and the separation between say delta A and delta X is greater than the coupling between them J A X and this is the consideration to define that as a weakly system whereas, J A and J B will be equal to the, the splitting between them J A B and this will be called strongly coupled system. So, a string so if you look at a strongly coupled or weakly coupled system are not reflection of the strength of the coupling constant alone. However, it is the consideration of the chemical shift. So, how far the chemical shift is in comparison to the coupling constant that determines whether the systems are weakly coupled system or a strongly coupled system. So, typically heteronuclear system are weakly coupled system and many of the uh, homonuclear system are strongly coupled system not all, but 
they are in homonuclear system, we have a strongly coupled system. So, if I look at the 13 C chemical shift, like 13 C chemical shift and proton chemical shift. So, the here on 600 megahertz, this will be near to 600 megahertz chemical shift and this chemical shift will be near to 150 megahertz. However, the coupling constant between them will be around say 150 hertz. So, this separation between the chemical shift is quite far from the strength of coupling constant and these will be weakly coupled system. This cannot be case for the homonuclear system. Here it can be like equal as we were saying here or almost equal. So, these will be a strongly coupled system. So, first order analysis or simplistic analysis are generally done for weakly coupled system not for strongly coupled system. For those we need a quantum mechanical calculation to understand. Now, one more concept I will explain and that uh, this, this is called chemically equivalent and magnetically equivalent nuclei. Now, a group of nuclei we can define as magnetically equivalent if all of them have a same chemical shift and each of them has the same coupling constant to every other nuclei outside that group. So, these will be called magnetically equivalent nuclei. So, similarly like here A to X. Now, A here if you look at here we have a three kind of proton, this proton and this proton will have same chemical shift and they have a same coupling constant with X. So, this will be called magnetically equivalent nuclei. So, that is why they, this system can be written as A to X that means 2 A are equivalent, but that are different from the X that is why it is called A to X. So, spin coupling between these magnetically uh, equivalent nuclei does not appear in the spectrum. That means the A2 there the spin coupling between them will not appear in the spectrum. Whereas, the coupling constant between this A and X and this will be appear. So, these they are not magnetically equivalent to X. However, among themselves they are magnetically equivalent. Now, look at the another system and here we define as another type of nuclei which is called chemically equivalent nuclei or isochronous. So, chemically equivalent nuclei will not be magnetically equivalent if they have a different coupling constant to other nuclei in the molecule. So, like if I look at here, here look at this molecule, the one substitution is NO2 and another is OH. Now, here the HX and HX prime, here HA and HA prime. So, these are actually chemically equivalent, but not magnetically equivalent. So, they have there will be coupling constant between these. They, they are not magnetically and there will be coupling constant between them. So, they are not magnetically equivalent, they are chemically equivalent. Like similarly, if you look at here, here H A and H B, they, they are not magnetically equivalent, neither they are chemically equivalent. So, there will be uh, coupling constant exists between them. If I look at these nuclei, so fluorine and proton, their chemical resonance frequency is quite, uh, quite close. So, they are also they are will be coupled and there will be coupling constant between them and uh, they can be also called different chemical uh, like they will be mag not magnetically equivalent neither chemically equivalent. So, now these all will be important in uh, interpretation of multiplate structure of a compound. Now, multiplate pattern, so when we do analysis the multiplate pattern of different groups of line will be different and that will be also di dictated by the relative intensity of individual group like as we see different group like CH3 was like this and CH2 was even more complicated. So, CH2 like it was splitted into 4. So, that we will look at how, uh, how the splitting comes from and intensity how it changes the intensity. So, that again is very important when we are interpreting the multiplet structure. And measurement of coupling constant, what I mean by measurement of coupling constant is this measuring JAB. Uh, from the splitting of individual group, 
is important because that helps in identification of group having same coupling constant. So, here this measurement is there. So, all these parameters we are going to discuss in detail the intensity, the, the pattern as well as the strength and that helps is us in analyzing the first order spectrum of the molecule. So, that I am going to discuss in the next class how to, to do the multiplet analysis of different um, groups and what is the basis of different intensity in the group and how we can measure or how we identify the coupling constant to identify the groups are similar or different and that all comes under first order of analysis. So, if you have any question for today's lecture you are welcome to ask and we will try to respond each and every point that we have discussed for today. Uh, look forward for your attendance in the next class. Thank you very much.